Hey there, it's Carolyn and I'm here to share a video for a project that I featured on my blog in May. This spinner shaker card features the brilliant Mermazing stamp set and the coordinating dies, as well as my circle stacks dies to create both the shaker and the spinner track. It's a super fun way to create a combo spinner shaker card and opens the door for lots of other spinner shaker card ideas. I started with an A2 piece of distressed watercolor paper. This is my favorite watercolor paper because it's bright white, ink blends on it beautifully, and it can take on a lot of water without decomposing. I should mention that I'm working on the textured side of the panel. So I'm ink blending with my mini ink blending tools, first with tumble glass, then some mermaid lagoon, and then salty ocean. I finish it off with another layer of tumble glass just to get the other colors to blend seamlessly. I'm blending a final splash of seedless preserves to add some depth of color and interest. These two colors will blend together beautifully to create the mermaid's undersea world. Next, I'm using my water spritzer bottle to add some splashes of water. I'm placing the wet panel into a rag and I'll fold that over to sop up some of the excess water and remove some of that ink. Then I'm adding some salty ocean and seedless preserves to an acrylic block. And I'll add some more water to loosen the color a bit. I'm using a really thin watercolor brush to add subtle splashes of color. First with the diluted salty ocean, and then with the seedless preserves. Add as much or as little of the splashes as you like. I like lots of splatters. Now it's time to create what will become our slider channel and shaker pocket. I use three of my Circle Stacks Dynamics in consecutive sizes with a quarter inch difference between the three dies. I ran them through my big shot and discarded the outside portion of the panel. Now I'm using that outside circle die and the stitched rectangle from Blueprints 15 to cut a circle from the A2 smooth Y panel and finish off the outside edge. I'm placing the sentiment from the Mermazing stamp set into my mini Misty, and I'm stamping it onto the lower left corner of the image panel using black licorice hybrid ink. I give it some really firm pressure with the palm of my hand to make sure all the ink transfers. I've selected one of the mermaids and the clownfish from the Mermazing stamp set and I'm stamping them onto a white panel using black licorice hybrid ink. I'll die cut them in my big shot using the coordinating Mermazing Dynamics. Now here's where I'll need you to be a little bit patient with me. I'm not a great colorist. I love my Copic markers, but let's just say I'm not the most efficient with them. So please bear with me as I color these images for you. I've sped it up to minimize the pain. And I'm sure you'll notice that I'm not too good about remembering to put the caps where you can see them. So I've listed them below as I change colors. I'll try to get better at this for future videos. But I'll be honest, Copics are not my comfort zone. I use three blue-greens for the mermaid spin. BG10, BG11, and BG23. For her top, I used V12, V15, and V17. For the star in her hair, I used Y38, and YR04, and I used the same colors along with 100 for the clownfish. Her skin was colored with E000, E00, and R20. That's what gives her those rosy cheeks. And oops, my camera was off when I colored the mermaid's hair. I used Y21, E44, E39, and E59. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of coloring but I'm so happy with how the images turned out. After two Copic certification classes, you'd think I'd have this down. I'm not super prof proficient, but I'm determined to figure these babies out because they blend so beautifully and bring so many of the My Favorite Things images to life. And P.S. Did you know that My Favorite Things is now carrying the entire line of Copic sketch markers and refills? One stop shop, my friends, that's MFT. I'm really looking forward to completing my collection and actually refilling some of my dryer markers. Hmm, I wonder how you do that. Yep, I'm Copic challenged, but I should get an A for effort, don't you think? Now that I've finished coloring my images, it's finally time to start assembling our card. I've placed the image panel onto a four and a quarter by 11 inch smooth white card base that's been scored and folded in half. The temporary position of the image panel will help me align the slider track and shaker pocket. Using the image panel aperture, I adhere the largest circle onto the card base with some tape runner and use the second circle to position the inside circle, which I also adhere to the card base. I kept the circles aligned properly, 
but honestly, I think they'd look just as good if the colors were mixed up a bit. Use your creative imagination. I used another Circle Stacks Dynamic, one that's just a bit smaller than the outside edge of the second circle, to die cut two acetate circles. I'll use these to enclose my shaker pocket. I'm adhering one acetate circle to the back of the second circle frame with some tape runner. Then I need to add two layers of foam tape to the back of the shaker pocket. And here's a tip. Do your best to keep the foam tape as close to the inside edge of the circle frame as you can. You'll need room for that slider disc to slide around. I snip little slits into the foam tape to help form it securely around that circle frame. Don't forget that second layer. It dawned on me, after I got almost done with this project, that it probably would have been a little easier if I had used one of MFT's circle shaker pockets instead of going to all this snipping and trimming trouble. Oh well, I'll try to remember that for next time. Now I'm adhering the clownfish onto the center circle with some tape runner. You can fill your shaker pocket with anything you like. I wanted to keep this pretty simple, so I added some sparkling clear confetti and some 3mm sparkling clear sequins. MFT carries a huge selection of shaker pocket elements, so you have a ton of options. Once I've added enough shaker elements, I remove the release paper from that second layer of foam tape and adhere the second acetate circle to the back to enclose those sparkly sequins. Here's another quick tip. If your sequins are super staticky, rub a dryer sheet over the acetate before adhering it to the shaker pocket. This should help keep those little suckers from escaping. I'm using some 1 8 inch double-sided tape in the circle where my shaker pocket's gonna go. I needed a strong adhesive to bear the weight and bulk of that pocket, especially for mailing. And I don't want my shaker to go flying off into outer space when the recipient shakes it, do I? Once the tape is down, you can adhere your shaker pocket to the card base. And remember to align it with the color patterns on the circles. Oh, how I love a fun interactive card. Since we added two layers of foam tape to the shaker pocket, we'll need to add two layers of foam squares on the back of the image panel. It's tedious, especially picking off all those rascally foam square liners. But once you're done doing that, you can align and adhere your image panel to the card base. Okay, we still need to assemble the slider mechanism for our slider channel. I used the circles die from the Surf and Turf Dynamics to die cut two circles from some white cardstock. Flip them over to the back side and add a small drop of glossy accents to the center of one of the circles. Place a slider element on top of that glue and hold it there for a few seconds to let the glue set. Once it's set, place another drop of glossy accents on top of the slider element and add the second circle. Again, hold it together with your fingers for a few seconds to allow the glue to fully set. Now pop that assembled slider element into the outside slider channel. Don't force it, it should just pop right into place. Once you're sure it's in place, add another small dot of glossy accents and position the mermaid on top. Hold it there to allow the glue to set. Finally, we're ready for our finishing touches. I added some of the sparkling clear confetti to the image panel with some multi mat medium and a jewel picker. I placed the confetti on the card base following the design rule of thirds. Those small details are what really take your projects to the next level. And there you have it, friends. An adorable underwater shaker card with a spinning mermaid to boot. you got to believe that the recipient of this card is going to be amazingly astounded at the cuteness and fun that this dual action project delivers. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll be back again soon with another fun project to share with you.